let's give it one last try, shall we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give the preliminaries. <laughs> How weird is that? Wow. Yeah, well, um, welcome and uh, congratulations. I honestly thought it was, uh, it was the end of the Violent Femmes until Viva uh, Wisconsin came along. And uh, then all of a sudden, on the back of that freak magnet, so you've right. been you've been busy, right? And we've been busy all through the time that um, I'd say a lot of people thought that we uh, ceased to uh, function as a group, or rumors that uh, you know we all died from accidents. Or whatever. Right. But uh, the reason for that is we uh, we were signed to a record company for almost a, it was almost a worldwide deal. Australia, New Zealand, um, and they would never release anything we recorded. Okay. We were, we were signed to them for a few years, uh, and that's, the Freak Magnet is a record is a selection of, it's kind of a, a new studio recording that's a compilation and selection mm -hmm. of uh, the work that we've done in the studio over the past, oh, I suppose about four years. Mm. Okay. Um, so there's, there's probably about the same number of songs uh, that that are not on this record, Freak Magnet, but that mm -hmm. also uh, we think are good songs. We mm -hmm. put together a certain selection. Mm -hmm. so, so these were the songs that uh, that the other record company weren't interested in? Uh, exactly. And and, uh, yeah, and I, I, uh, I, I think that they, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just no, uh, no way for me to reasonably figure that one out. Because mm, mm, mm. I actually um, got the album, got the advance yesterday, and uh, was just going through it. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I failed to see what the problem was, but as you as you say, it's um, be that as it may. To the point that you you now have um, a deal with Cooking Vinyl. Um, how I did think one thing that'll that'll be good so far for us. It looks like uh, sometimes we've had. Um, I'd say for most of our career, uh, we've been signed to uh, either uh, a big label or a label that, in 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 essence, really was a big label because they were they had a deal, you know, very closely with another large major label, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, um, so now we we've, we've gone and we've made, and almost always been a worldwide deal, and now we're, we're we've gotten. Uh, deals directly with smaller labels in mm. uh, three or four, I guess four territories in the world, and, uh, and and I think that's going to work better for us. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, because I, it, I've always sort of thought to myself, you know, the Violent Femmes, where do they, you know, where is their biggest fan base? Because you've got a huge fan base here in South Africa. You've got, I think, yeah, you enjoy phenomenal support um, in Europe and even in the UK. Is it the same in the States? The, the interesting thing is our uh, in terms just in terms of numbers of people mm. uh, we're most popular in the states okay um, but that's not uh, that's not the industry that's not um, or certainly not uh, uh, the world of uh, journalists or uh, other you know people that make up the the, the music business as a, as a you know in a, as a whole um, but fans just uh, people mm. in the states just uh, Basically, uh, every teenager at some point, or maybe when they, if they don't, in the, before they go to college, then at least when they go to college, uh, I've been told again recently there isn't a party anyone can go to at a at a university where violent fan music isn't being played, mm -hmm. um, and that continues to happen right up uh, till today. And I know that happens in the space like that. I'm not sure about some. Of the other countries, it seems that we have more of a mix of uh, older fans with also some younger fans that are mm -hmm. getting into it. But in the States, the fans tend to go away at a certain age, but they're replaced by many more of the younger fans mm -hmm. that keep uh, just finding out about the group. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think and it I'd is? I also mention, I think in terms of just a um, per capita, um, I think it probably is Australia, where we're the most popular, just in, you know, how popular is the group in relation to the, the, the population. I think Australia may be the number one for that. Mm, but now, what, why do you think that is? I mean, the band is nearly 20 years old. Um, yeah, musically, you've, uh, 
your style is is your style. I don't think anyone's ever been able to even, whether they've wanted to or not, could ever replicate what you're doing. But um, to the fact that you, you know, that your music, I think at the end of the day, just hasn't dated. That it's just got this um, longevity aspect that you know new and existing fans just keep on latching on to. You know what it is that you guys do. Well, I think you you maybe were asking and also answered a question at the same time. <laughs> Which is fine. I like it. <laughs> uh, uh, just one other comment, something I could think of, something that we've been aware of. Uh, most and probably all, I thought most is a safer thing to say, but it may, it very well may be all. Going for, to our first record that we made mm -hmm. um, that came out in 1983, mm -hmm. and this new Freak Magnet record, there isn't anything on, on the record that, that would... The record could have been recorded in the 60s, or the 70s, or the 80s, or the 90s, or now in the the noughts, or the nulls, or yeah. whatever, it is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, the sounds that we have, uh, the way that we're approaching things, it pretty much could have been at, at any time. So that, I think, adds to the, this, or, or creates this thing you're talking about, mm. about there's a, a timelessness to it. That's where... You know, the Freak Magnet record has songs that uh, were recorded, uh, some of them recorded three years ago, or I think some may even be close to four years ago, but it doesn't matter. Mm. It, it sounds like it, we could have just recorded it yesterday. Mm, mm, mm. No, I mean, is, is is that sort of in your mind the way that you've, I mean, from the time that you, you started from putting out the first album, you, you, you had the sound, be it from your vocal style or just the arrangements of how you put the songs together. But um, that, that longevity or that um, sort of evergreen aspect of what you do, I mean, it certainly um, doesn't sound contrived in any way that's in, in, from the point that you've tried to create it. No, no, and uh, no, it's not contrived, it's, but, but there is some awareness of it, but uh, I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it's more of a, of a natural uh, thing for us, even though there is, there is some self-awareness of it. Right. And um, what I mean, what is it that um, I mean to the point that yeah. you've you've um, continued um, with the band for as long as you had, uh, you know, as you have to the point that you're now in the in the nulls, as you say. Um, Eighteen years on, is is this where you when you started and you put out that first album that you thought that you would you would be in the nulls and you would be uh, you know releasing a brand new album. Surrender. All right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry about the uh, techno technological problems. Yeah, it would seem it's it's weird, and I mean we use satellite here, so it doesn't say much for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as we were saying, you've um, um, so just moving along. I mean, the Viva uh, Wisconsin album that was released in October last year. Um, so was, has found a home in South Africa, has been released, I mean, as has um, your catalogue in the past as well. But um, pretty much um, summing up a, a, a stage in your life that I thought, okay, if, if you put that out, that to me was sort of signalling, you know, the end in one respect, because it was a case of that was how you guys will always be best, well, you'll, you'll be best known for is your live shows. Right. Um, at that point, would what was the thinking behind putting that album out? Well, okay, I'll give you the history of that, and hopefully we won't be interrupted. <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, yeah, no. Um, we we recorded the Viva Wisconsin record when we were uh, after we had gotten the music that we put together to make the Freak Magnet record and had left the label that we had been with for mm. a few years, but mm. really just on paper only. Mm. And we had a series of concerts uh, in uh, the state where we had started, although I haven't lived there in, in, in easily 15 years, and, uh, and no one in the band lives there currently. Um, we knew a promoter there for many years past, and he had a, a concept of us playing some smaller cities and smaller towns where we had never played before. And... and uh, we, we, we put together this, this, you know, an idea to play all acoustic because they were uh, some small
smaller places and some that were very good sound and uh, that, that uh, that's always important when attempting to play acoustically mm. as opposed to electric mm. uh, and uh, and then again we knew David Vartani and we've worked with him on, on various uh, records uh, who lives and works out of Milwaukee Wisconsin so we thought well he can just drive his car and can go and record these shows and right. he's able to do it so it all for new, you know several reasons that went into the situation where we thought this would be a good opportunity to record all these shows and then to pick through and the fact that we were not at that time signed to any record label mm. meant that we felt we could go ahead and do this at, because for every record contract we've ever had has a part of it that specifically excludes a live recording the record industry at least in the United States hates hates live records. That's so strange. do whatever possible to make... They, they, they'll say there's always the exception of like that one artist where they put out a live record and mm. it's multi-platinum. But mm. basically, they they don't want a group to, to have a live record. They want new studio recordings. And if there is a live record that is released, it does not go towards fulfilling the contract. Mm. So there's really, mm. you know, contractually speaking, there's absolutely no reason to do it. There's right. no reason not to do it. Okay. Um, so we thought we're not signed to anybody. Why don't we make this live record? Uh, and if it had been up to us, we would have had a live record probably, you know, from 10 years ago and then one now again every 10 years or so. Mm. Why not mm. have mm. another live record? Mm. Um, and, uh, and then what we did was we put together the Viva Wisconsin record and the Freak Magnet record and got a new manager and said, is there anybody in the world that wants to put out <laughs> this music, meaning both of these records? Yes. And the decision was made to put out the Viva Wisconsin first and follow up quickly with Freak Magnet. Mm. Um, and I, I, think, I think it's really because putting out a live record let people know that we were alive. Sure. Yes, yes. Still mm -hmm. exi you know, the band still exists. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that people could go, oh, yeah, I rem I forgot all about mm -hmm. them, but now I remember that. Yeah, they're great. Oh, they're so much fun. And just kind of have people remember again about the group and that we're still working. And then mm -hmm. you can come out with the uh, the live record. And as a strategy, uh, I guess that, that was it. Mm, mm. No, and it certainly worked, I think, um, from that point of view. <laughs> because I think um, what is uh, what will happen is that people will, if they haven't bought the Viva, uh, Wisconsin album yet, they'll when they buy a Freak Magnet, they'll buy it just out of default. Because as much as, as I say, your your reputation as a band um, is one thing um, to a lot of charities like ours who haven't seen you perform live um, yet. Um, can I hold you to that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to come, but, you, you know, well, we can discuss that after you're finished with this, this, yes, this yes. thought here. Yes, but um, to the point that, um, as I say, new fans and existing fans will, will probably land up buying both those albums um, in order just to, as you say, pull it back and, and let people know that you're there. Mm -hmm. But, um, as I say, when you, when you, I mean, as much as you knew that you were going to do Freak Magnet, um, yeah, the album. <clears throat> um, was it a case of that on the back of having done um, the live album, um, did it sort of sort of invigorate you to, to sort of confirm your place where you know as musicians and as as credible musicians and as you know in in the the two thousands and still wanting to do what you love doing so much. I'm not sure if I understand the question. One thing is, which I guess you got from what I said, the, sometimes somebody's asked me, well, doing an acoustic live record, did that make you, you know, excited for, like, doing something different and going in the studio and recording more with electric instruments, mm. but as they stated, it was really the other way around. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. really not much connection between that. Um, I think, certainly as a, uh, oh, I don't know, I, I have a greater interest in the Freak Magnet record because it's, it's newer material. Sure. Uh, new songs. Mm. Uh, and the uh, I'm I'm pleased and 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 you know and and proud enough <laughs> of the of the of the Viva Wisconsin record. I think that it's a good record and it's a fun record. And it captured a lot of um, excitement of of uh, a live show. And mm. uh, I especially like that it has some extended improvisation sections, which would be the majority of people. That's not what they like the best, but some people do. And I think mm. it's something that we do 
that's very unusual for a rock or pop type group to have so uh, sections of real free improvisation with with of a you know so, uh, often with an extended lineup of mm-hmm. adding some other horns and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I particularly like that of Viva Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm I'm I, I, you know I find a greater interest in the Freak Magazine because of, of the newer material, the newer songs. And, such. Mm. And when when you look at Freak Magnet and you and you compare it to the to the huge catalogue of material um, that yeah you know, that you've built up over the years, what excites you the most about Freak Magnet? Oh, mm. well, one thing that that comes to mind because it's it's unique is our collaboration with Pierre Henri, mm. which is a, a he's a French composer and innovator and pioneer in, uh, in uh, recomposition and in recording, um, and it's an incredible honor to have done something with him, uh, and that's the last song called A Story. Mm. Uh, that's something which uh, we supplied for him, the uh, bass, drums, and, and the vocals, mm. the text, and everything else on it. He, we wanted to give as much space as possible for him to do what, what he does and what he's been doing for oh, I guess probably close to 50 years now. Mm, mm, um, mm. Uh, and that's, uh, that's certainly uh, something that mm. would come to mind. Mm, mm. Because, I mean, um, across all the labels that you've been, well, the labels that you've been signed to um, over your career to the point of where you are now, um, you've always, it would seem from, you know, from the outside, that the music that you write is the music that you write. You've never compromised yourselves in order to, um, you know, to satisfy either a record company or anybody else to the point that, you know, could, could it be argued that, that uh, the Van Femmes enjoy sort of a, a bit of self-indulgence? Well, I don't know. I think that <laughs> self-indulgence always has, has tends to, I think, just sound as a, as a negative. You know, mm. I don't know how. No, I mean it in a positive. I put it in a positive way. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, attempting to make the best music that we possibly can at any given moment, mm. that's basically it. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, to the to, to the point that you, I mean, as I say, you believe in what you do, and obviously, you know, the, the millions of fans out there appreciate the fact that you, you know, haven't, you know, given in to, you know, Big Brother or, you know... Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's basically true. The other thing is that we're, we're not really... Nobody, you know, gives us an a, a incredible opportunity to sell out. You know, we're not important enough to anybody to have anybody even say, you know, here's the $10 million for you to do things that, you know, that doesn't happen like that. And actually, at times in our career, we've tried working with the record company, even to the point of taking suggestions and seeing if there's a way that the suggestion could be good or could be something that could be used and we would feel good about it mm. no then no we wouldn't do it of mm. course mm. but if somebody had a suggestion and we pursued that idea whether it's working with a certain individual or um, a certain you know song you know an idea of doing some song or something well sometimes uh, that can work out and it could be like okay that was good mm. but it never uh, never led to uh even when that was was successful, um, or something that we thought turned out good, there mm. was never it, that didn't mean that we got a big push or any mm. and the industry got behind us in any kind of way. Is, it, is that sort of a disappointment in a way to you, or are you happy, you know, with what you've achieved in a way in which you've actually, uh, your heart's actually panned out at the end of the day? Yeah, I, there were times when I, where I would have been mm. quite frustrated about it, but I'm 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 more content now with it than. Where how things are than, than mm. ever really I I think uh, I think it's fine mm, mm. Uh, everything it's all I I'm not even uh, I'm not even upset about having about five years in between a uh, maybe even six between mm. a a, um, a new studio recording coming out mm. um, I don't know just that's the way it happens and, and it's okay what were you what did you do during the gap. Well, one thing we did because it was uh, it, it cut down almost completely ended our touring in other countries because promoters in other countries would say wait till they they you know tell the agents mm. booking agents wait till they have a new record mm. 
obviously. You know, mm. Have a new record out and then come tour back in our country. Mm. Uh, well, and then there was always the idea if it was the spring, well, the new record will be done and out in the fall mm. or something like mm. that. And then, mm. of course, the years kept going by. So the thing, but we still had as much or more work than we would we would really even want in the sense of, um, I think there's, there, though, I don't, I wonder what the number would be of colleges and universities in the United States. Mm -hmm. The number is something extraordinary. They're just, they're everywhere in every state across, the, they're like big and small and, mm -hmm. and they, you know, in exaggeration, but it seems like they all want us to play. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the college, and they don't care if we have a new record or don't have a new record because mm -hmm. they're fans of the group and they're, they're, you know, the concert committee made up of students, mm -hmm. what band do you want to have come play? Well, Violent Femmes are either the top or one of the top names mm -hmm. on a list like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that really, uh, that made it so there was nothing to worry about as far as where the money is run out and now what are we going to do because we can't get a record out and we're mm -hmm. going to have to quit or do something or get, get another job mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we did lots of that through the years, as well as periodic festivals or sometimes a club gig or a theater gig, but not anything extensive with a tour, because even in the States would be, well, wait till they have a new record. Mm, mm, mm. So you, you didn't take up any sort of fanciful hobbies or, you know, take to sort of fly catching or anything like that in between? No, well, the thing was, we were working the whole time. At, at really as much as, as ever. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I do other things, but it wasn't like now I had a year and what am I going to do with this year? Mm, 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 mm. To the point now that you can probably take the next two years of your life and and, uh, and put them towards um, Freak Magnet. Well, I guess if the record's popular enough, that's a possibility. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, then... Then you get the other thing of a country might go, well, that record's out, and it's been out so long, and it's come and it's gone, so mm. uh, come back next time you have another record. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the, back that you, on the back of the fact that, um, as I said, the live album came out in October, Freak Magnet's coming out in March in the States, um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting another album before the end of the year. Well, it, 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 it's in negotiation. Mm -hmm. it's actually, there really may be something like that to happen, I don't, but it's, uh, it's still being uh, negotiated because we really have another record that, that's all ready to go except for putting together an order and maybe a little, you know, a couple little tweaks, but, okay. you know, selection and order and, you know, some of the songs I think may not have been mastered, some have been mastered, so a little of that kind of work to do, but, mm. the, the you know, the, the songs are recorded and mixed. Sure. So it, yeah, that would be nice, maybe for Christmas. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you've gone from one extreme to the absolute other, if you think about it. Right, right, yeah, I like that. Maybe if we could get three records out in a year. <laughs> That's great, I like that idea. And then, you know, take another five or six years off and come back with another three in a year. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. That's the balance of your career sorted out, yeah. That's right, it is, it is, because we're, we're all, in a sense, in a way, we're always doing the wrong thing, you know, we're always not, you know, and not the right timing, you know, mm. usually. it's like, okay, we're playing with all acoustic instruments and playing rock music, and nobody's doing that, and people think it's really stupid. Mm. Then later, you know, it starts becoming popular, and then people kind of, except for the musicians, which mm. is so great, there are people in bands that I keep meeting periodically, and Sometimes somebody will tell me that there was an interview that they did, if they're a journalist, or that somebody read, a friend, you know, where there's a, you know, an artist that's saying that they were really inspired by a lot of, you know, early mm. violent femme stuff that mm. they were doing. And I, that's great. Mm. That's, that's actually, that's really high up on the list of, of things to feel good about. Mm. But I think you've certainly Sorry. achieved that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, Gordon, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to ask you one last favor, if I can. Sure. Uh, we're going to be putting this out. Um, it's going into a magazine, and it's also going to be going out on air um, on a station called 5FM, uh, which is the country's biggest and only pop station. Um, and it's going to go out in a show um, called The Night Zoo. The Night Zoo? The Night Zoo. Um, with a gentleman by the name of Barney Simon. 
Bonnie Simon. Yeah. Okay. No, if you want to play with that, um, if yeah, you want. you know, I, I, I usually do them pretty straight. Cool. Pretty straight. That's cool. Uh, and uh, I'll try it, and if, I, if it's not right, then you, now you want the 5 FM in there, too? You could throw it in if you can. Okay. All right, all right, here we go. Hey, this is Gordon Gano of Violent Fans, and you are listening to The Night Zoo with Bonnie Simon on 5FM. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it, 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 it's one of the easier things. You know, it's, all right. I'm not going to ask you to sing. Nah, nah. unless it's your birthday. Now, happy, happy birthday. Dude. You're like, amazing it is. Huh? Yeah, I'm just, just thinking, what would be the weirdest thing that you've ever been asked to do? The strangest thing you ever asked? Mm. Mm. Well, there was something pretty strange recently that I did not enjoy. It might sound enjoyable, but... Uh... Oh, well, here's another one, actually, that was this... We played... Uh, as I keep getting so many things to pick from. Mm, mm, mm. Um, a... Do you know the uh, basketball player, former basketball player, and boyfriend of Madonna, et cetera, et cetera, Dennis Rodman? Yes, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah he um, he had a um, New Year's Eve party, and uh, we were asked to uh, be the band at his party, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was a very very wild, wild, wild experience. And he, uh, got on the stage and he kept uh, he just joined us but he was playing drums if drums were available he took a bass if that was available and he's just playing along with all our songs and he doesn't know any of them mm -hmm. but he's uh, he's a inc very large and was extremely drunk man at his show and at his party so it just goes and he kept taking my microphone so to do whatever he was doing so I couldn't sing the songs and I'd wait for him to like stumble to the side of the stage and then try to quickly sing a verse or a chorus and then he like just go back to sort of vamping the tune while he went back on stage and did all of his stuff and you know there were fights that were breaking it was in a museum to a natural history so people were like climbing on top of the dinosaur exhibit <laughs> I mean you know and like walking around like with like alligators that they like broke out of museum cases no. and stuff and just, I mean it was sick it was really a, to, to me it was kind of a nightmare of course, our bass player, Brian Ritchie, had the best time I think he's ever had. With you. <laughs> <laughs> he and, and he and Dennis were like, kept rubbing up against each other and doing all kinds of simulated sex acts on stage you know, while they're playing bass and stuff like that. And I'm just, I just keep looking to try to, to, try to stay alive. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of a funny story, kind of fun. But that was weird. I mean, but it was what we were doing, just mm -hmm. playing a gig, doing a show. But... It went into like this this incredible surreal madness, mm -hmm. like a dream, mm -hmm. you know, like this dream that you just can't wake up from. Yeah, yeah. I was I was going to ask you, how did it end? Well, it ended with us just, you know, I mean, finally finished and got out. Oh, and he was bringing up, he was bringing up people in wheelchairs and like and giving them all champagne and getting all these people in wheelchairs that were so drunk they can't. You know, they're wheeling, like, you know, and they're, like, knocking into our amplifiers and ourselves as if, like, trying to play music. Oh, man. Right. These very drunk people in wheelchairs. And then he's like, oh, it was just an on and on. Insane. And on. Yeah. yeah. Well, as long so as I... Just, at, some point, at some point, it ended, and we, and, we, and we got out of there. You ran, yeah. Ran for the door. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is... Uh, Brian Richie has a as a theory. His wife is a scientist right. uh, at a pretty high level, and they'll go all around the world with all you know science things. And she was up for a a job at that museum in uh, Chicago. <laughs> and he's quite he's absolutely positive that she was declined <laughs> for that because they found out that he <laughs> because the museum was almost destroyed. No, was terrible. You know? No, a shame. So now, yeah, he's got to live with that as well. Uh, so. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Um, yeah. So hopefully we'll uh, someday get to your country. Yes. Um, well, I, I think you've got a record company down here that's certainly going to endeavour to do just that. Um, be great. And uh, it would be good because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised as to just how big. I think we we might even compete with the Australians in some respects. So. Uh, well, that would that 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 sounds exciting. Mm. Mm. Well, good. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks so much for your time. Apologies for the line. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.